Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on In The Blocks. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can call a smart contract function using Web3. If you remember the first video of this series, I explained that with Ethereum, you can interact with a smart contract with two different API. The first one is read-only, that's what we call a call. And the second one allow you to write data, that's what we call to send a transaction. So what I'm going to show you here is for the first case. And for the transaction API, we're going to see this in the next video of this series. So if you've watched the previous video of this series, you probably remember that in order to communicate between Web3 and a smart contract, we need to first create a contract instance. And after with this contract instance, we'll be able to interact with our smart contract. So let's see how we can use this contract instance. All right, so I'm going to open up a smart contract project. If you follow this series, this is the same project as, as for the last video. So let's see what we have inside. So this is a typical Truffle project. By the way, if you don't know what is Truffle, check out my introduction to Truffle on my channel. So we have our smart contract inside the contracts folder. So let's see this. So this is a very simple smart contract. We have an integer variable here and a couple of functions. We can get the value of this variable. We can change this value. And the function we're going to call is the get data function, which is read only. So let's open another file where I put some code. So I explained all of this in the previous video. Basically, we instantiate Web3 and after we instantiate a contract instance and with this object, we'll be able to interact with our smart contract. So we are going to call our get data function. So contract dot method. So all the public function will be attached under the method key on your contract instance. And then you use the name of the function get data. If you have any argument, then you will pass your argument like this arc one, arc two, etc. In our case, we don't have any argument. And after you call the call method and inside the call method, you can customize the call by passing an object. So for example, you can specify the calling address from zero X, whatever. Then you can also specify the gas price and also the gas limit. So if you don't know what is gas limit and gas price, check out my series on gas on my channel. But in general, for a call, we don't need to specify these parameters. These are more useful for transactions. So with this call function, it's going to execute the function on your spot contract and return your the return value of the function. So there are several API actually to get the data back. So one API, which is a bit old school, is, is the callback API. So here you'll have to give a function as a second argument. And the first argument will be the result from the smart contract. So I don't really recommend to use this API because this is really old school and we know better. So another way would be to use the promise API. So in this case, you'll call the then method and here you'll do what you want with the result. But the most modern way is to use the wait keyword. So this is also going to return a promise this way, but you're going to get the result more simply like this. So you define a variable and then you can console log the result, for example. So actually, we're going to try with this method. So in my other terminal, I'm going to start a local development blockchain with a truffle develop command. It's going to start Ganache and I'm going to deploy my smart contract. OK, and then I'm going to execute my script. So node index.js, the integer variable wasn't initialized, so its default value is zero. So everything is working. So one last thing I'd like to tell you is that it's possible to call a function that is read only, but it all, it's also possible to call a function that can write data to the blockchain. Like for example, the set data function, you can also execute this function with the call API of Ethereum. 
For example, if you want to get some return value from this function and check if a transaction would have executed correctly, that's something that you could do. But in most cases, we want to use the Ethereum call API with read-only function. By the way, if you want to have all the useful info about Web3 in a condensed format, I have prepared a short cheat sheet about Web3. You can get it for free. All you have to do is to follow the link in the description. That's it for this video on how we can call a smart contract function with Web3. In the next video, I'll show you how you can send a transaction with Web3 and execute function that can actually modify data on the blockchain. Thanks for watching. See you for the next video.